Motorbike theft is one of the fastest growing crimes in the UK, up 44% in the last few years. Highly organized gangs are stealing motorcycles to sell them on or strip down for parts, even putting the stolen parts together in illegal chop shops to make a different bike altogether. But cutting edge technology is being used to fight back against the thieves. A security scheme known as Master, the motorcycle scooter tagged equipment register was launched with the backing of the police. Individual parts of a motorbike are now marked using ultraviolet etching and radio frequency identity tags. This means every part of a motorbike contains a unique code which can track it back to the legal owner. To hopefully clamp down on thieves selling bikes made from stolen parts to unsuspecting innocent victims. I've always wanted an R6, it was a dream bike of mine. I'd found the bike on Gumtree, a Gumtree app. I messaged the bloke, travelled down on the weekend, saw the bike, I took it out for a test drive. It paperwork seemed legit, the bike seemed legit, and I purchased it there and then and brought it back home. It was the perfect bike for me at the time. It was the one I've always wanted. So I was lucky to get it first time. So I thought. I went to Brands Hatch Racetrack in October 2015. I went to watch British Superbikes racing. I took the girlfriend with me. It was a nice day out. I first found out there's something wrong with the bike at the track. Hello? I got a phone call from my insurance company. They told me to go back to my bike as they knew I was at Brands Hatch. I was kind of confused at the time. I didn't know what was going on. OK, I'll be there in a minute. Thank I've gone back to the bike, it's been pulled forward, the police are around it, data or tag are around the bike as well. I honestly had no idea what was going on at the time. The security company who run the nationwide bike tagging scheme was scanning for stolen bikes and parts. We came across Kurt's bike and scanned it as a matter of course. There was no outward identifiers to say it got master scheme on, but it was in the vulnerable age range of bikes, so 2005 to 2010. Bikes manufactured in this period didn't have security markings on them, which is why they are more likely to be stolen, and which is why Kurt's bike set alarm bells ringing. The police managed to contact Kurt, who was with his girlfriend watching the racing at Brands Hatch, and ruined his day, really. The police told me that the bike had stolen parts on it. The engine, the seat, and the mirrors itself were from a different bike. Technology allowed us to track those parts back to an original stolen Yamaha R6, which had been the donor bike for the clone bike that Kurt ended up buying. So when he came in and bought his motorcycle, he was actually buying two bikes, one stolen, one not. And unfortunately, when the investigations came to an end, it transpired the only thing that poor old Kurt actually owned was a frame. I was angry. I didn't know what to say. I had no idea of the problem at the time. I had no, I was completely unaware. Never knew anything like this was going to happen. I was told by the police that I could take the bike, but if I signed a declaration, I couldn't change any parts on it, I couldn't sell it and I couldn't break it. I was under investigation from the police. I could have been fined, sentenced, I don't know. He was genuinely, genuinely shocked. And, uh, you know, his first big bike, he'd saved up hard to buy it. He was very proud of it. And, you know, everybody recognised very quickly that it was he was the innocent victim of a scam, and a scam that is all too common. Owning a stolen bike had knock-on effects. I was worried because I had to avoid it back. I didn't know if anything was going to go wrong, whether it was going to fail, was it going to fall apart. I had the girlfriend on the back, which made it worse. The risk was higher. This bike had been built by a thief. He was quite worried that potentially he and his girlfriend were riding home on a death trap. When these bikes are put together as cloned vehicles, the people building them are not mechanics. They're bike thieves. And, you know, would you trust a bike thief to build your bike? Kurt was left in limbo while the investigation carried on. And it was several weeks before the police and insurance companies came to a decision. I was in contact with the police for possibly five to six weeks, maybe longer, constant emailing each other. I had police officer come round to check the bike itself. 
it was quickly established that he was innocent, he had bought it in good faith, he'd done as much as he could reasonably to check that it was stolen. Kurt kept his pride and joy, but it's never felt quite the same. I was happy when I got told I can keep the bike, but I wasn't 100% with the bike itself in the end. I was more worried about the safety of it. I've ridden it three times in the last five months. I haven't wanted to ride it as much. The love's gone. I feel unsafe sometimes on it. I'm insecure. The experience has definitely ruined that bike for me. I do want another bike. I do love bikes, but the R6 is now ruined. I think Kurt's experience does highlight to anybody looking to buy a used bike that it is a bit of a minefield and you need to check everything you possibly can. Engine number, frame number, registration number, HPI check, and make sure they all match. And if they don't, walk away.